Hello and welcome to uh, Study IQIS. My name is Bhuvan Apoor Vajha and this is the lecture 4 of uh, the Aranya series wherein we are looking to cover the whole syllabus, the entire syllabus of Environment, Ecology, Forest and Climate Change in the run-up to uh, UPSC 2024. Okay. So, uh, just before we begin the class, can you just very quickly let me know if you can hear me alright, if you can see me alright, so that we can begin. Okay. Deepak, Bulbul, Harapriya, good evening. Welcome guys, all of you. So, on our agenda today are essentially four topics that we are lo looking to cover. Okay. These will be very brief topics. We will try to cover them uh, in a manner that is sufficient for UPSC in the shortest possible time that will consolidate your understanding. Okay. So, let's get started. And uh, what I have for you essentially is first, we will take a look at biotic interactions. So, up until now, we have discussed say ecosystem, ecology, biotic factors, abiotic factors, food chain food web, all of that has been done. However, one thing that for now we need to straight away understand is the biotic interactions and we will understand it in the simplest manner possible, in a manner in which you are going to remember before the examination. Okay. Karuna, Nikhil, good, good evening guys, welcome. Thereafter, we will take a look at uh, ecological succession and what you find is that this is a, a, a very critical area in so far as say examination is concerned because a lot of questions are picked up from here. And for a, a, a concept that is not really that difficult, okay. But the questions are picked up frequently from succession and homeostasis. So that's going to be our agenda. And thereafter, we'll finish with pyramids. We'll just revise it. We have discussed it, but uh, we'll take a brief look at pyramids also, okay. So before we start the class, straight away, uh, well, this is my uh, uh, Telegram channel. Go ahead and scan this. You will find the PDF of all the lectures that we do uploaded here. In fact, a student had reminded me that the third uh, lecture's PDF is still to be uh, uploaded. So, I'll upload both third and fourth after this class on my Telegram channel. You can go ahead and access it. Okay. And uh, this is my Instagram channel. If you face any particular difficulties, any doubts, do uh, do not hesitate to reach out. In fact, I'll be, I'm all here for you. Okay. So, let's take a look at the first question from the third lecture. Now, the content the theory for all the questions, the first six, seven questions that we will do has been discussed in the third lecture, okay? So, the first statement, small changes that take place within an, organiza uh, an organism to overcome surrounding problems is called acclimatization. You see, acclimatization is the smaller changes. Like the example I told you, you go to visit Leh Ladakh, you are going to stay there for 12 to 18 hours to let your body acclimatize. Okay, so the small changes in a short period of time, those are classified under acclimatization. Okay, whereas the gradual changes, okay, that will play out over a, a period of time, they are adaptations that will say enable a particular organism to survive in a particular environment. Okay, so adaptations, acclimatization, both statements being correct here. The third one, features, habits that help an organism survive in an environment is called evolution. So, uh, the simplest manner to understand evolution is that there is progress happening. That eventually, the previous species gets subsumed and a new species, a new variant of that species comes forward. Okay. So, that is evolution, wherein what you find is that certain features are developed, certain habits are picked up and eventually the growth of that species happens. Okay. So, all the statements here would be correct. Sorry, none of the statements here would be correct. Incorrect, in fact. Okay. The question asks us to identify the incorrect statements. So, none of the above. Great. Let's look at the second question. So, here again, all of the above are uh, correctly matched. This is straightforward, a factual question, not a lot of analysis here. Let's look at the third question. Sloping branches. Now, again, these are essentially what you're looking at are mo methods or modes of adaptation. Okay. How do living organisms, plants, animals go ahead and adapt to say various types of uh, uh, climate or environment? Okay. So, first one, sloping branches is essentially found in the tundra or a taiga region. Now, you might be wondering how, how did I arrive at that conclusion? Well, what you essentially find is, if you take a look at this, the whole point of a tree having sloping branches is to make sure that when it snows, the snow drifts off from both the sides. It quickly goes uh, onto the ground level. It does not stay on the tree level, okay? Because the more the snow stays on the trees, the more matting of the tree happens, 
okay? The matting of the tree happens, which means that it's going to disturb the way the tree functions. The normal functioning of the tree is hindered, okay? So this is again the tundra tiger region. Next, waxy stem, thick leaves, again is in, found in the desert region. You're looking at, say, reducing water uh, uh, transpiration, in fact, okay? That the water loss should be minimized. Transpiration should be minimized. For that, you find that the entire plant will take uh, preventive measures, okay? The stomata will close. You will have, say, thorns that will develop. Animals, in fact, go ahead and, say, secrete urine, which is high in concentration, okay? It has less water content. All of these are adaptations that plants and animals are taking in real time to make sure that they survive in a hostile environment, okay? Next, canopy. Again, go by the logic, guys. You know your geography so far. A canopy is essentially to do with the range of the tree's width, okay? The foliage, how big is it? So you will straight away understand that this is going to happen in, say, the tropical rainforests, okay? Wherein, what happens is because of the excessive rainfall, okay? Now, you what, what happens essentially? All these grasses, all the other living organisms that lies under the shade of the tree, okay? That is essentially now looking to fight for survival. So the canopy acts as a limiting factor when it comes to the other uh, organisms that live in its shade, right? So canopy is for uh, uh, tropical vegetation, you can say that's correct, okay? And thereafter, deep roots are not for tundra, by the way, okay? Incorrect again. So the correctly matched here would be, well, uh, two and three, okay? Two and three would be correct here. Let's go forward. A well-developed ecotone comprises some distinct organisms that are not found in adjoining communities. The best example to remember this, Sundarbans. Okay. What are ecotones? Essentially, the area. If you have a particular terrestrial uh, biome here, a terrestrial form here, okay, an ecosystem here, a marine ecosystem here, the area in the middle is known as the ecotone. Okay. Now, this is again a man-made concept. The natural way dysfunctions is that you have an ecocline, which means that this intermingling between the terrestrial and the marine ecosystem is gradual. It is not, say, a fixed line that uh, you can draw across and say, here is where the terrestrial ecosystem finishes and here is where the marine ecosystem begins. That's not how it happens in nature. Okay. So the, the way that happens is ecocline, that gradual shift happening, whereas ecotone is a man-made concept. Okay. And ecotone has greater productivity than natural ecosystems. Please understand again the example of Sundarbans, that you find that the whole of Sundarbans is able to sustain villages and forests and it has a lot of produce. The net productivity coming out of that particular place is higher than say terrestrial and aquatic ecosystems. Okay. So again, this is correct. And edge species are found exclusively in ecotone areas is correct. All statements here being correct. Okay. Let's go to the next one, E. So again, these are UPC PYQs. We'll very quickly take a look at them. First, understand diatoms. What are exactly diatoms? So for example, you know phytoplanktons when it comes to, say, the plant life in, in the marine, in the, in the sea, in the ocean. Okay. So the equivalent form in the animal life is the diatoms, the most primary form of life that it exists down there. Okay. Diatoms are, say, the first level, the first trophic level, the first trophy. Thereafter, the diatoms are consumed by who? The crustaceans. Now, why? You might wonder, who are the crustaceans? Now, what is this new term? Well, don't worry. Crustaceans are arthropods, essentially. Okay? Arthropods. Which means, you're looking at, say, the whole family of crabs, etc. Okay? So again, you have these diatoms that are consumed by the crabs and obviously the crabs are consumed by the bigger fish, say the herrings. Alright, so the sequence here, straight away, diatoms, then crustaceans, then herrings. Okay, next consider the following kinds of organisms, copepods, cyanobacteria, diatoms, foraminifera. Okay, please understand straight away, this is asking you to identify autotrophs here. Who can go ahead and make their own food? Class 1 of the series, I told you that you just don't have plants that you're looking at. 
you also have particular animal life that you can consider that goes and makes its own food. Say algae and bacteria do that. Okay. So in this case, what you find is cyanobacteria and diatoms. Okay. They are the ones who go ahead and make their own food. Foraminifera, if you know, if you have heard of this word, chitin, this is essentially a single-celled amoeba or amoeboid in fact. Okay. So now the more important part about foraminifera, okay, you'll, under, you'll remember this I know. Foraminifera is essentially neither a plant nor an animal. It is found deep in the oceans. It is in fact a very critical part of the deep ocean ecosystem. Okay. So they, they are in fact not uh, someone that make their own food. They are not the primary producers. Okay. Same with copepods, not the primary producers. So in this case, you find that the answer here is B. All right. Next uh, question, well, very simple question this is. The highest productivity, okay? Simple way to remember it, guys. Which ecosystem has the highest productivity, okay? Pranjul, good evening, guy. Um, good evening, boss. Welcome, welcome. Theek hai. Aap ye dekho. Which is the highest productivity? Straight away, remember the top three. Estuary, okay? Marshes, lagoons or mangroves. Now, what's common between these areas, guys? Please understand them first. Why is it that they have the highest productivity? Because what you find is that they often are areas of ecotone. They are the transition areas that you are looking at. Okay. Whereas, say, in terms of the lowest productivity, you are finding, say, obviously, the usual suspects, deserts, oceans, seas, they have the lowest productivity. Now you might think and ask me the question as to how does an ocean have low productivity? Well, how do you measure productivity is important. Okay. So productivity is measured essentially with the amount of say uh, substance generated for creation in say a unit square area. Okay. Given that again oceans are voluminous. Okay. So what you find is it's almost like say per capita. In economics that's how you know, no? The per capita emission of India is say, lower, which is why we do not have an accountability. Do you realize? Because there are so many of us, which is why our per capita is low. Similarly, because the volume of water in the oceans and seas is so high, which is why you find that the per capita productivity of oceans and seas is very low. Okay, That's how you're going to remember, guys. You're not going to remember each and every fact in detail throughout the uh, course of your preparation. You're going to apply common sense. Okay. In this case, you find, uh, what, what does it ask me? The decreasing productivity. Okay. So, you're going to go from the highest to the lowest. So, which means the lowest you're looking at is, uh, well, this. First, mangroves, again, ecotone area. Thereafter, grasslands, lakes and oceans will come in the end. Okay. Lakes and oceans will always be in the end. It's one of the least productive e uh, ecosystems, say, globally. Okay, only comparable to say deserts. Clear? Okay, so these were the questions. Well, this one again, the answer here. A food chain illustrates the order in which a chain of organisms feed upon each other. True. Food chain are found within the population of a species. Translate this. Do you have a situation where say a tiger eats a tiger? Are you looking at, say, a food chain only within a species or is it outside a species? Is it within a community? Is it not just say, related to a species or just number of species? You have a tiger that goes ahead and eats say, a, a, a gazelle or a deer, a deer that has been eating grass or goes ahead and eats something else. Then that is say, related to a primary autotroph. Is that not the whole story so far? Okay. So, which means food chain is not just within the species, it's within the community, it's within the ecosystem. All right. A food chain illustrates the number of each organisms which are eaten by the others. Obviously, it does not illustrate the number. Okay. It gives us the, the direction of energy flow of matter flow. Okay. So, in this case, you have just the first option that is correct. Is it asking us to identify correct? Yes. Okay. So, these were the questions of last class. Okay. Some very easy questions, some not so easy questions from the PYQs. We will take a look at the individuals who attempted them and attempted them correctly. So, Karuna, Shubham, Vishakha, Priya, Darshan, Evergreen, Shubhankar, Mandeep and Tannu. 
Thank you so much for your answers. I'm happy that most of you have got most of the answers correct, which is very good. Okay. To the rest who are watching this, go ahead and attempt the questions. You will benefit out of this whole exercise, I can assure you. Okay. All right. So, uh, let's get started now with today's class. First, what we'll take a look at is biotic interactions. Now, this will be shared in the PDF. Understand it this way. Okay. For example, this is you. All right. And then this is your dog. Okay. Or your pet. Fine. Two biotic interactions we are going to take a look at A and B. All right. So now consider the relationship you have with your pet. Okay. Forget uh, environment ecology for the time being. Okay. Your pet gives you companionship. You give it a home plus food plus love. You both are benefiting out of this arrangement, which means you share a particular relationship. Okay. Now consider the same relationship, say in a different scenario. For example, if you have say, if it's this is you and say rather than a dog or a cat, all right, rather than a dog or a cat, suppose you have a snake as a pet. Many people have snakes as a pet. Okay. Nowadays, nowadays it's all, all, all fancy. Harapriya, the questions will be in the PDF. I will upload it on the Telegram channel, say in the morning by around 6, 7, 8 a.m. Okay. You can upload it, uh, access the questions from there and leave the answers for me in the comment box. Okay. Now understand this. So if you have a snake now, okay, you give it home, food, love. All right. But the snake possibly may not like you. After all, it's predatory. Suppose it bites you. Okay. Or it chokes you to death. If it's a boa constrictor or an anaconda type thing that you have got for yourself. And if it goes ahead and wraps around you and kills you. So what are the options here? Now your relationship is not the same as what you shared with your dog or your cat. This is essentially biotic interactions. The relationship two living organisms share, wherein the possibilities are either both are benefiting or both are not benefiting or one is benefiting and the other is either not benefiting or is neutral. Okay. There is a certain concept called neutralism also. We'll discuss all of this today. Very briefly, you will understand. Neutralism is also there, which says that you have two organisms A and B that share a neutral relationship. Now, what happens? This normally does not exist. Okay. This is again a theoretical concept that is put forward. It is very difficult to find, say, two particular species that are neutral to each other if given they would be in the same scenario. Now, you might ask and say, you know what, how about a dodo and royal Bengal tiger? Huh? But then again, one is say extinct, one is still here. So again, that relationship is not going to hold. What you are going to look at is two species who are present in on the face of the earth. If you were to put them in a room, what is the relationship that they are going to share? That is biotic interactions. Now, very quickly, we'll understand the different kinds of it. Number one. Firstly, understand the categorization, positive and, bio, uh, positive and negative. Either you will benefit or you will not benefit. Kharcha hoga ya nahi hoga. Number one, mutualism. The relationship you and your pet share. Your dog, your cat, your bird, your fish, whatever it is. Wherein you both are sort of, you know, having this trade-off. That I give you home, food, shelter, you give me companionship. So, both species are benefiting. Otherwise, your dog might, might be on the streets, municipality wale utha ke le jate usko. So, he is getting a safe place, mutualism. Okay. Number two, commensalism. Now, this is to be remembered in tandem with amensalism. We will understand both very quickly. Okay. Commensalism, one species benefits and the other is unaffected. So, you must have seen on, on, on say, uh, uh, in the fields that there is, say, a cattle here. Okay, my drawing is not that good. Suppose this is a cow and there is a bird on top of it. Okay, so now what happens here? The cow is going ahead, eating its grass, chilling out. The bird is there. What happens? Eventually, the egret eats the insects that the cow stirs up. You know, it goes ahead through the forage, through the grassland, eating its grass. Eventually, the insects are the ones that get stirred up. The bird that is sitting on top of the cow goes ahead and feasts on them. The, the, the cow does not seem to mind it. 
He's like, I couldn't really care. Fine, do what you want. Okay. That becomes commensalism. Similar example. For example, in the sea, you have fishes, no? Huh? You have fishes. Thank God I could draw fish. Now you must have seen, say, big whales, huge whales. They will have barnacles that will be attached to their body. Okay. Now they will be traveling long distances in the sea. The whale does not mind the barnacle attached to its body. The barnacle gets access to fresh water, or fresh resources, fresh environment. The only way you can say that the whale could probably be being getting compromised is because of the drag effect. That the whale is having to put say more energy to swim because of the barnacles attached to its fins. Otherwise there is no harm for the whale. Okay. So that again becomes what? That, that is commensalism. Okay. Next again, we'll look at amensalism also, wherein one person benefits the other. Okay, let's look at amensalism. One person is harmed, the other is unaffected. So for example, certain type of plants, okay, they will release a certain type of uh, uh, secretions in the soil to make sure that there is no other growth around them. You see how it functions. What is happening here? That the plant that is secreting that particular uh, fluid or whatever it is, you know, that acid that it is secreting, it does not affect itself, but it is affecting all the other plant growth around it. It is killing competition. What has happened in that case? This becomes amensalism. Commensalism positive, amensalism negative. Okay. Thereafter, the next one is competition. Straight away, you know, you are in a competitive examination. Competition is what? Two species competing for a similar resource. The relationship they will share will not be positive. It cannot be positive. Okay. Next, predation. Predation is quite simple to understand. You have a species that is high in the food chain. Okay. Another species that is below it in the food chain, their relationship is not going to be of love. It is going to be of predator and prey. Again, a negative biotic interaction. Okay. Similarly, the next one, parasitism. You have, say, all these sorts of roundworms, ringworms, whatever it is living within you, if you, say, have uh, stomach problems or gut problems. That is a parasite that is living within you, which means that that particular parasite is benefiting, whereas you are going to find that you will lose weight, okay? That uh, you will not have hunger, okay? That you will have, say, uh, all other bodily problems that will arise out of having, say, parasites in your stomach. All right, that is parasitism, simple like them. And next, neutralism, which again, basically is again a theoretical concept. Okay, what you can often say is, well, one example is that you have say two different species of bird on a tree living together harmoniously, not interfering in each other's job. However, what you find is that often they will be competing for similar resources around the tree. So that neutralism very often transcends and becomes competition. Do you realize? So again, neutralism is the other one. So remember this particular chart, okay? This whole chart coming from the Study IQ book on environment. This is my primary uh, thrust uh, book for this whole series, okay? So remember this, the positive, the negative, the biotic interactions. Once you know this, all of it is done, okay? The examples, have a note, make a note. For example, the difference between commensalism and amensalism needs to be remembered through examples for better recall. Okay. All right. So these were the biotic interactions. Very, very uh, basic. We didn't do anything very high level here. Questions have come from here. We'll discuss them as we close the class also. Take it. All right. Now let's go ahead and look at succession. Okay. So very simply, okay. Book will give you a lot of gyan. Succession aise yaad rakho. Best way to remember it. Okay. For example, you have a particular area. All right. Now this area had say suppose only rocks on it. Okay, these are all rocks. All right. Eventually what happens? Because of action of say climate and weathering and this and that, all of that happens. Finally, suppose you have a lot of ice that comes on top of it or snow that comes up on top of it. Okay. Or say a, a, a volcano, you know, lava flow comes over all of it. Eventually, you are going to find that in a certain, after a certain period of time, all this particular rock structure will be breaking down 
and you will have say a certain type of say algae start growing on top of it or a lichen lichen will start growing on top of it not algae in fact a lichen will start growing on top of it okay so here it is the first form of life has come forward eventually this lichen eventually from a very primitive form more complex life forms will develop okay more complex plant forms will develop to the extent where you are eventually going to have say, say huge tree in that area you see you began from rocks okay you came to say lichens or lichens then you had say other plants that developed and eventually so for example you have a teak tree that came up here this is essentially succession it's like the hbo series only okay so what does what are the relationships again that we have to understand okay so let's understand the relationship first the definition the gradual process through which communities develop and establish in an area over time okay so this is the gradual process that you're looking at now one might be tempted to ask how long will this process be of okay this process you're looking at is as thousands of years because eventually what is happening you are having life getting created from the most primitive form and eventually becoming a more complex form of plant life a huge tree do you realize correct karuna absolutely spot on this is essentially succession now a tip i'll give you so that you remember this even better succession primarily you are looking at is of say four types the first two primary and secondary succession the way to remember it okay primary succession and secondary succession how are you going to remember it okay because you have so much to remember you can't be remembering these tucha facts so apply your mind now wherever you are talking about primary succession one thing that you need to know is that in primary succession there will be no soil or essentially no substratum will be created beforehand okay there will be no soil or no substratum which means what when this rock was there there was no soil you can't have say life grown rocks okay some sort of life will exist now that we know that there are say plants that will have deep roots go inside rock and develop also but from the examination perspective from the understanding perspective okay there was no life here nothing here eventually after weathering after breakdown of the rocks you find that say lichens came up first then finally you have the teak tree develops say after thousands of years so a substratum a soil was formed there was no soil initially so wherever the soil is formed for the first time that is a part of primary succession ground rule 100% correct okay wherever the soil or the substratum is formed for the first time so for example you have a new island that has come up because of say whatever actions plate tectonics has once again caught up and you have a new island that has come up from the sea okay now that island may have say a certain uh, seabed uh, attached to it or it may be just rocks if it is just rocks eventually due to the action of the sea the ocean the sunlight the air eventually you are going to have some sort of basic life that will take over that rocky structure okay therein is your substratum getting formed so that is primary succession jahan pe bhi mitti pehli baar banega wo primary succession hai secondary succession kya hai suppose jhaming ha jham cultivation we have all read and uh, uh, heard about so you go ahead there is already a, a, a plant life there you burn it all down okay and then you go on a chutti 10 saal ko ab nikal gaye kahin aur 10 saal tak wo land waise hi pada raha that land remains like that for 10 years after you have burnt it after you have practiced jamming on it nothing is done for 10 years after 10 years you come back you recall acha acha you know what let's have agriculture on this land that becomes secondary succession the species that will come up first the type of plant that will come up first it has also got a certain name to it but then this process wherein there is already soil there that is secondary succession okay that is how you are going to remember guys arka not a problem good uh, good evening please not at all i'm happy you are here theek hai so let's look at it now 
सो इट डिनोट द चेंज इन स्पीशीज कॉम्पोजिशन ऑल ऑफ दिस थेरी आप देखोगे नो अंडरस्टैंड दिस फ्रॉम द कम्युनिटी परस्पेक्टिव सो द फर्स्ट कम्युनिटी डेट कम्स ओके द लाइक इन और द मॉस दैट हैज कम ओके सो यू हैड रॉक्स इवेंचुअली ब्रेकिंग डाउन यू हैव लाइक इन दैट हैज कम अप देन यू हैव से सिंपलर प्लांट्स दैट हैव कम अप सिंपल प्लांट्स एंड इवेंचुअली यू हैव से कॉम्प्लेक्स ट्रीज okay complex trees right so this whole process has a name but what you find is the lichens and the moss they are called as the first species or the pioneer community fine thereafter now you have the simple plants that have developed and they'll go stage by stage no so, so you'll have say a smaller leaves bigger leaves better sturdier stem will come up Plant by plant, stage by stage, community by community. Okay, this is a very simplified ex example I am giving you. This does not happen so straightforward, by the way. You know, scientists spend their whole lives trying to understand this. Okay, but for the sake of our example, so lichen becomes our first, our pioneer community. Thereafter, what you find is that the complex trees that are finally formed at the end, you know, on this rocky, barren piece of land. they are called the climax community which means that particular area has now climaxed that is the maximum potential that is the maximum level of plant evolution that can come in that particular area okay this is is called the climax community and all the other communities in the middle okay they are called transitional communities or you are also looking at seral communities okay the transition ones so you have say a1 then a2 a3 a4 finally say the teak tree comes in a6 so a2 to a6 becomes a serial community clear and now this whole process this entire process of from lichen or moss up until the complex trees this whole process is called as sear s e r e sear okay you will remember this why because this has been asked frequently in various examinations i am not just talking about upsc here okay from state to boards capf nda cds you name it they have asked you about ecological succession okay so once again very quickly i'll uh, revise it for you my lichen or moss becomes my first pioneer community then you have stage wise growth going on all those intermediate stages are called as serial communities a serial phase or transitional communities and finally this massive product this finally fully developed product that has developed at right at the end is called my climax community and this entire process is called sear s e r e theek hai ye clear hona chahiye sabko so now the different types of serial community the different types you will have one that is based on water one that is based on salinity okay zero on dry habitat samo in sand and litho on bare rock surface okay different names same process happening more or less clear hai sabko theek hai climax community you know the fully evolved the fully developed is the climax community now let's look at this the example that i've been telling you about ye dekhiye first you had bare rocks okay eventually you have lichens develop okay weathering happens finally you have lichens develop and for lichens to develop you need some sort of external action okay so it needs to be either say lava flow or some snow sleet ice something needs to be there to basically break down that rock and introduce the other catalysts that are needed for the primary form of life to develop okay so from lichens then you go to the simpler plant forms you see from grass you are looking at going all the way up till a fully grown tree so once again this becomes your pioneer community this becomes your uh, last one that is climax community and all of these my friends are your serial community okay and including the uh, pioneer and the climax plus the serial all of this becomes your sear this is how you are going to remember so how many components does sear have one your pioneer community okay the first basic form of life that has come up number two 
all the transitional communities that are there, the serial communities. And number three, your finally developed, fully developed product that has been formed right at the end. That is called the climax community. Clear hai? Okay. Same thing again now when you're looking at say a fire action. Okay. Jumping wala example. So again, you have fire that has developed microbes that will come up eventually due to sunlight action, due to breakdown of say organic and inorganic molecules. Eventually you're looking at all of this happening in a course of say 200 years and the same process follows. Pioneer species, the seer species, the climax community. Is succession absolutely clear for you now? Okay. You should never make a mistake now after this explanation. One more thing that you need to know about. The soil and substratum bit. Okay. The only way you can uh, straight away remember from the exam perspective. The primary succession will always have the element of soil or substratum being formed. Okay. It will be formed first. And only then you will have the other serial communities, the climax community develop. Okay. Whereas in secondary succession, you already have soil that is formed there. All you need to do is say, go ahead, work on the soil, the substratum and new species will come forward. The rest of the theory is easy. This is the way you're going to remember. Okay. This is obviously a longer process. In fact, thousand also is less. You're looking at a huge long time process. Okay. Whereas succession is... Generally, 300 years ke andar andar ho jata hai. Correct. Absolutely. Karuna, time taken by the primary succession is infinitely, in fact, almost five to six times more than the secondary succession. Okay. Now, there, it's a very good question, in fact. This is how you're going to analyze, guys. Karuna, what you have done is, you have made yourself a MCQ statement. Okay. Now, the other, uh, uh, say, observances. We'll also take a look at what are the other observations that you need to take into mind going forward. Okay. Now, uh, like I told you, you had say primary and secondary succession. Okay. Primary plus secondary was there. Now, the other forms you're looking at is autogenic succession, which is because of the biotic factors and the allogenic successions, which is because of the abiotic factors. Again, just a basic theory you need to know. Nothing very really difficult about it. Okay. That succession can also be guided by biotic and abiotic factors. When it is guided by, they say, biotic, life-like factors or life-giving factors, you are looking at autogenic succession. Whereas allogenic is requested, uh, is related to the non-living uh, uh, factors. Okay, have a look at this slide. Nothing very difficult here. Now, hydrosphere and xerosphere. Hydro for, say, wet. Wet habitat. Well, zero is for dry. Okay, we discussed this whole list here. You have a look at this list. Okay, make sure that you know this list, this whole list here. This is what I am referring to right now. Okay, this list here. So let's look at this list now. Straight away, hydrosphere in the water, which means your first, your pioneer community <clears throat> will be what? The phytoplanktons. This basicest form of life, again, basicest is not the correct word, but the most basic form of life. Okay, and thereafter you will have say zooplanktons that will eat the phytoplanktons, and then since something else will eat the zooplanktons. Okay, a small fish probably. Okay, that's how it goes in the water. No, you have phytoplanktons that are consumed by the zooplanktons that are eaten by say smaller fish that are eaten by say bigger fish. This is how it's working there. Right. This is what you're looking at the energy flow in the marine ecosystem. Similarly. When you are looking at, say, uh, development of communities in the marine ecosystem. So first, you have the phytoplanktons. Then, you are looking at, say, a little evolved way of phytoplankton. Something that can probably float on the surface of the sea. Something that can probably start to creep on, say, uh, structures. And then eventually you will find that those plants, those particular living organisms will develop roots. That's how evolution happens. You start from the basics. And you go and then develop stems and leaves and flowers and all of that. Okay. So this you will take a look at. Okay. Remember the names though. Okay. Because uh, uh, the names, the stages of hydrosphere and xerosphere. Okay. Hydrosphere and xerosphere has been asked. Not in the UPSC but in different other examinations. So for example, one question that was asked uh, say in 2012 or 13. I forget the year. The question asked essentially to arrange... 
okay from uh, from say the uh, basic to complex form of life complex forms okay and then they'll give you these names so red swamp stage floating stage submerged stage understand this submerged then floating then swamp then you go ahead and develop more and then you become that finally created product it's going to be a, a bottom up approach okay so straight away you'll remember these two again not just for the wet one but also for the dry one have a look at it not very difficult okay for example in the dry one first you have the pioneer phase the lichens come up then you have the folios lichens the moss develops the shrub develops eventually the climax forest after which there is no development anymore in fact what you're looking at is that you're going to go back to the five year stage after this okay this is in fact cyclical this process succession is a cyclical process okay that eventually you move up pro get promoted up until say uh, uh, the climax community and then eventual disintegration and then starting from say the introductory community the pioneer community again okay this essentially is succession in a nutshell okay the other terms that you need to be aware of nudation okay again nudation is what that the area is getting cleared okay the breakdown of rocks for example development of a bare area without any form of life so all the rocks are there cleared now after the rocks are uh, say breaking down then you have the first type of species that come in they invade the area you see now the plant species has invaded that rocky structure that bare rocky structure once they have invaded then they will compete amongst themselves to say gain prominence in the area okay so you are looking at the different forms the reaction okay competition see eventually they'll start competing in a particular rock area of all of these plants have come up huh? infiltrated eventually all of these plants will look to say survival of the fittest darwinism eventually it is that you know nature will give you ample uh, say chance to survive but once the chance has been provided you need to so go ahead and say showcase your ability to survive that is what survival of the fittest okay thereafter you're looking at stabilization the climax stage eventually one particular plant will go ahead and say you know what i am the big boss of this area now okay and i will dominate the rest will be subservient to me this is essentially the process of evolution clear okay all right so let's look at the next one now homeostasis simple concept again nothing too difficult it's to do with say when you are say feeling hot why do you think you sweat of say if you were to go ahead to leh ladakh kargil or sikkim north sikkim why do you shiver it's how your body reacts to the environment around you it's the physiological adaptation to the environment around you that essentially is homeostasis okay to maintain that particular say uh, that particular uh, level of uh, consistency so as to be able to survive in a harsh or hostile environment is homeostasis okay so an ecosystem can self regulate itself the various components of the ecosystem work together to make a stable and balanced environment okay so let's look at this the different mechanisms of homeostasis number 1 you go ahead and do this you regulate your temperature don't you guys you are partaking in homeostasis okay similarly conforming which means that you are not going to adjust yourself to the external environment what you are looking at is essentially that you are going to regulate the uh, you are not going to regulate your internal environment okay why do you sweat because your internal temperature is high so it needs to cool down which is why you sweat so in in conforming you are not looking at the internal changes you are looking at the external changes reptiles do this snakes the cold blooded animals do a lot of conforming okay whereas the hot blooded animals will look to regulate clear thereafter you're looking at migration many birds many animals migrate thereafter many um, animals sleep hibernate also no all of these are what to maintain homeostasis to make sure that you give yourself the most ample chance to survive okay and that you can do either through regulation through conforming or through migration or uh, or, or uh, going to sleep okay either of that 
that is what homeostasis is now which animals engage in homeostasis can someone tell me in the chat tell me most animals in fact all animals will engage in some form of homeostasis or the other at some point or the other clear so that essentially is homeostasis very very easy again okay and finally we look at ecological pyramids now uh, we have say in the last class we discussed this no that there is a sun then there is a tree okay there is a rabbit here okay a rabbit eaten by a fox and a fox eaten by a tiger is this what we discussed in the last class guys okay this is the sun this is a tree now what happens the sun gives energy here broken down by the tree the carbon bonds are broken it goes ahead functions as the autotroph here okay makes its own food which is now eaten by the bird the bird eaten by the fox the fox eaten by the tiger this unidirectional flow can you go ahead and say make a good model out of this for example if you wanted to go ahead and launch a conservation plan for the tiger will this information be sufficient for you not really no you are going to need a lot more information after all okay this is one way you are saying that okay energy flows from this way to this way the other way you can go ahead and make the same thing in the uh, same relationship in the forest is if say you go ahead and form the relationship by numbers okay that okay how many trees are there how many of these rabbits are there okay so for example there are 1000 trees there are say 250 rabbits 25 fox and 5 tiger will that still be a sufficient uh, uh, information for you to go ahead and plan a conservation strategy what else would you desire for example the third one you can ask for yourself is say go ahead and ask for biomass now what is biomass it's the weight of a living organism okay now biomass can be of two types one is wet and one is dry now again scientific terms but what does it actually mean so biomass is essentially what when you discuss dry biomass it means for example i give you say a rabbit okay now i ask you to calculate the wet biomass so you go ahead take the rabbit put it on a weighing scale and tell me okay the rabbit weighs say 5 kilos okay now please understand the wet biomass includes the water content in the bones and the tissues of the rabbit similarly i go ahead and tell you now give me the uh, dry weight of the rabbit so what do you do you wait for the rabbit to die or kill it whichever way then you go ahead and say uh, uh, sukha wait you know usko sun dhoop ke niche ab rakhoge take out all the moisture from its body make it absolutely say moisture deficient and then you go ahead and wait and you will find that it will be something around 2.8 kg okay so what happens whenever you are discussing of biomass in these ecological pyramids you are always going to consider the dry weight why because the volume of water the amount of water in a particular living organism may vary from time to time depending on consumption or the atmosphere around the environment around okay so dry weight is always used to, uh, in terms of say considering the biomass of organisms now these are the only three methods one is energy the second is numbers the third is biomass these are essentially the basic tenets of your ecological pyramids this relationship can be expressed now say for example in a in a forest you have say like i told you 10000 trees okay which are being eaten by say 250 rabbits which are being eaten by say 25 foxes and those foxes are being hunted by five tigers this becomes what a pyramid of what tell me guys art art 055 good evening good evening can someone tell me if this is my tree this is my rabbit this is my fox this is my tiger what is this becoming the pyramid of numbers you see this is how you are going to create pyramids okay correct similarly think tell me the biomass now tell me the biomass who will have the higher biomass here for example many number of trees in the forest okay which means their biomass will be higher now you go ahead rabbits their biomass will be lower obviously not in comparison to the trees go ahead next 
फॉक्सेस इवन लोअर यू आर लुकिंग एट से ट्वेंटी फाइव फॉक्सेस टेन किलोज ऑफ अर्थ दो दो सौ पचास किलो ही हुआ सो दैट इज अगेन थ्रू अ पिरामिड ऑफ बायोमास ऑल ऑफ दीज हैव डिफरेंट कॉन्सिक्वेंसेज और रेमिफिकेशन दे आर नॉट द सेम अक्रॉस द बोर्ड सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल अ पैरासाइटिक फूड चेन फॉर एग्जाम्पल लेट्स टेक अ लुक एट दिस नाउ सो यू हैव अ ट्री अ ट्री इन इट सेल्फ इज एन इको सिस्टम नाउ अ ट्री माइट हैव से सेवरल डिफरेंट बैक्टीरिया ओके इट माइट हैव वेरियस ऑर्गेनिजम्स लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम्स इंसेक्ट ऑल ऑफ दिस लिविंग विद इन इट ओके सो नाउ दिस इट सेल्फ यू कैन गो हेड एंड रिप्रेजेंट थ्रू अ पिरामिड ऑफ बायोमास और अ पिरामिड ऑफ नंबर्स और अ पिरामिड ऑफ एनर्जी डिपेंडिंग ऑन द रिलेशनशिप द डिफरेंट स्टेक होल्डर्स शेयर इन दैट इको सिस्टम दैट इज ऑल द थिंग इज ओके करुणा बायोमास विल बी सिमिलर टू नंबर्स वेल यू सी बायोमास इज एसेंशियली टू डू विद द वेट नंबर्स इज टू डू विद द क्वांटिटी ओके एंड सो वट यू ऑफन फाइंड इज बायोमास एंड नंबर्स डोंट गो हैंड इन हैंड फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन द एक्वेटिक सिस्टम ओके इन द एक्वेटिक सिस्टम वट यू फाइंड इज से फाइटो प्लैंगटोन्स नो इफ यू हैव सीन अ बेसिक डॉक्यूमेंट्री इफ यू रेड अबाउट इट so many phytoplanktons uh, like millions and trillions of them exist no so by number wise they are quite high but when you consider the biomass they are nothing zero zilch matlab very less you see so you can't make a direct correlation there i would not advise that okay so let's look at the different uh, ecological pyramids now first pyramid of number well pyramid of number will stay upright where in any ecosystem normally what happens okay normally what happens so for example in a grassland the number of grass is more than the number of herbivores obviously the example i gave you know trees herbivores okay carnivores will be lesser okay similarly inverted pyramid kahan pe hoga in parasitic food chains okay wherein you are looking at say a single large tree is the producer and it supports a large number of bats and birds at the third trophic level the bird lice are parasiting each bird okay thereafter you have hyper parasites you see so it becomes inverted this way does it not right because what you are looking at say a large number of birds thereafter lesser number of say uh, the ones the lice on the bird thereafter parasites and hyper parasites इन्वर्टेड हो गया ना सो अ पैरासाइटिक फूड चेन विल बी इन्वर्टेड इन टर्म्स ऑफ पिरामिड ऑफ नंबर ओके क्लियर नेक्स्ट टेक अ लुक एट दिस ओनली सी इन एन एक्वेटिक इको सिस्टम है लुक एट दिस नाउ द डाई एटॉम्स दैट वी डिस्कस टूडे द मोस्ट सिंगल सेल द मोस्ट प्राइमरी फॉर्म ऑफ लाइफ इन द ओशंस दे एग्जिस्ट इन अ लॉट ऑफ नंबर नाउ बट देन वॉट यू फाइन दैट दे आर ईटन बाय द मॉस्किटो लावे lesser in numbers the mosquito is eaten by the tilapia fish lesser in numbers eventually it is eaten by say a shark or something lesser in numbers okay so this is again in terms of the inverted pyramid you are looking at for a parasitic food chain whereas an aquatic uh, 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 ecosystem you are looking at a straight forward upright pyramid all right similarly pyramid of biomass wherein you will only consider dry weight okay make sure that you remember this small fact i never ask you to remember and recall but small facts you need to remember so whenever you are going ahead and calculating biomass you always look at dry weight so like uh, take the life out of the living organism let it dry under the sun thereafter measure the weight dry weight theek hai so again represents the total standing crop biomass upright pyramid of biomass where are you looking at example of this in an aquatic system again phytoplanktons are the producers they have very short life cycles so even though they are more in numbers ha huh, phytoplanktons are much more in numbers eventually they are getting replaced their life cycle is short so what happens their biomass is limited is it not eventually what you find that the biomass of the shark is far higher five sharks together or five great whales ha huh, their biomass will be higher than say 100 kg or 1000 kg of phytoplankton easily easily okay so that is again pyramid of biomass and finally 
you're looking at pyramid of energy, which is essentially the whole diagram that I told you from sun to the tree, to the rabbit, to the fox, to the tiger. This unidirectional flow is constant when it comes to energy. Okay, energy is always lost in a food system. Why? Because eventually you are lo losing heat. You know, you're dissipating energy through heat. The thermodynamics uh, uh, laws are, have to be followed. Okay, that some energy will be lost through heat, and most of the other energy will neither be created nor destroyed, but will just be changing form and manner. Okay, so again, a basic ground rule is that a pyramid of energy is always this way, always upright. Why? Because eventually you are going to lose heat in any form of energy transfer, which means you cannot go uh, 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 inverted. It has to be an upright triangle. Karuna, you are absolutely correct. Yes. Okay. So this is essentially pyramid of energy. Now let's look at these questions. This is question number one. This is two. Okay. This is two and this is three. These are PYQs for which you will uh, leave the answers for me in the comment box. Okay. Go ahead and leave the answers for me in the comment box and see if you can attempt each of them comfortably. Okay. So lichens, which are capable of initiating ecological succession, even on a bare rock, are actually what? You will let me know. With reference to food chains, I think we have done this. Huh, I think we have done this in the last class. Go ahead and still attempt it. It's PYQ of uh, 2013. Okay. Which of the following are primary producers? Again, a PYQ of 2021. Next question. Pyramid of number, inverted parasitic food chain. Pyramid of biomass, inverted aquatic food chain. Pyramid of energy, inverted parasitic food chain. Pyramid of biomass, upright grassland ecosystem. You will identify the correctly matched for me. Next question. Okay, which of the above may register an increase? Karuna, this question is for you. Since you made that very uh, pertinent observation, I'm actually impressed. Go ahead and attempt this too. You know, in terms of succession, what is it that you're looking at in terms of species diversity? Apply your common sense. Guys, all of you, okay? That first type of life has come up. Will it be much more diverse? Or will it be much more diverse when you have teak and oak and all of that big, big trees that have developed? When will the species diversity be high? Common sense. Okay. Next, biomass kab high yoga? When you have the lichens getting formed or the species, uh, many species that have been formed, say, during the climax community. Okay. When will the biomass be higher? Similarly, lifespan kab zada hoga? When it is a single-celled organism or a multi-celled complex organism? Yes. Where, think for a moment. We have evolved, you no? Know, from uh, say the Homo erectus and all of that previous versions. Their lifespans were close to what? We know that in 1850s, uh, 70s only, the lifespan of an average Indian was only this much. Not very far ago. What changed then? Huh? Eventually we are evolving. We are fast heading towards becoming the climax community. Okay. So which of the above will register an increase is absolute common sense you will apply here to get the answer. Okay. Finally, the last one, in which of the above is either of the species operative, either of the species neither benefited nor harmed. Okay. The relationships that we discussed, the biological interactions, okay, commensalism, animalism, uh, animalism, then thereafter predation, competition, all of them together, neutralism. So you'll draw that chart once again for yourself. Okay. Draw the chart for yourself. So that you're able to quickly identify. Quickly identify. Okay? And let me know the answer to this also. Alright, so this completes the lecture 4. Wherein we have now completed more or less the basics of environment ecology. The last, uh, next class, lecture 5, is where we'll discuss a little bit of biology. We'll take a look at carbon cycle, nitrogen cycle, sulfur cycle, phosphorus, all of that. And thereafter, after that, finally now that the basics are over. After this, finally, we'll begin with what can be construed to be actual environment for the UPSC. I have studied a lot of basics and you have also seen how many questions come from this. Okay. Alright guys, that concludes it for today. Do uh, consider leaving me a like uh, in the comment box. If you like something about the class, do leave me a comment also. Answer the questions in the comment box compulsorily. 
and you will find the PDF of this as well as the third lecture uploaded in my Telegram channel by uh, tomorrow morning 8 a.m. All right. Thanks for watching, uh, guys, and I hope you will consider answering all the questions. Have a productive day, productive uh, weekend coming forward. Study well and reach out to me if you face any difficulties or doubts. Okay. Thanks for your time, guys.